Good morning. Welcome, ICOM faculty, staff, family, and distinguished guests. Thank you for joining us for the white coat ceremony for the Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine class of 2027. Before we get started, please take a moment now to silence your cell phones. You are welcome to take photos and videos during the ceremony, but please be, do so quietly without disrupting the ceremony. Thank you. At this time, I invite you to stand as you are able and remain standing as the student doctors for the class of 2027 and the ICOM faculty and administration process into the hall.
Good morning and welcome everyone. I am Dr. Thomas Mormon, the Associate Dean for Student Services. It is my pleasure and honor to guide you through the White Coat Ceremony for the class of 2027. The White Coat Ceremony is a tradition adopted by medical schools across the country and around the world. It reflects a symbolic entrance into the medical profession. The ceremony is a rite of passage in which these future physicians are presented a white coat for the first time. The white coat is a symbol of professionalism and humanism, essential to the practice of medicine. Additionally, today, the students will recite the osteopathic oath in front of their peers, faculty, family, and friends. They will each acknowledge their willingness to assume the obligations and responsibilities of their chosen profession. Today is a day to celebrate our student doctors. At this time, I would like to introduce our platform party. Dr. Tracy Farnsworth, the ICOM president and CEO. Dr. Jim Souza, Souza, last year's Ada County Distinguished Physician of the Year and our guest speaker. Dr. Kevin Wilson, ICOM's Dean and Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Luke Mortensen, Associate Dean for Educational Development, Innovation, and Diversity. Dr. Robin Drybelbus, Associate Dean for Graduate Medical Education. Dr. Matthew Linton, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Dr. Daniel Bridger, Assistant Dean for Clinical Affairs. Dr. Sarah Davis, Assistant Dean for Osteopathic Integration. Dr. Janissa Oberbeck, Associate Professor of Osteopathic Principles and Practice, and Dr. Oz Nakayama, ICOM Alumni Representative from the Class of 2022. We also have several faculty who will be recognized as they coach students later this afternoon. I invite the audience to be seated, as well as the platform party. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Robin Drybelbus to come forward for the invocation. Following the invocation, our ICOM president and CEO, Dr. Tracy Farnsworth, will provide an official welcome. Good morning. I am honored by the invitation to offer the invocation at your white coat ceremony. I can assure you in my decades of, of the practice of medicine, as a student, a resident, a physician, and an educator, I have reached out to God in prayer many times to help me make the right decision on behalf of my patients and myself. Today, let us offer thanks for the ability to gather together to celebrate the hard work that allowed each of you to sit here today as a member of the ICOM class of 2027, and to foretell the amazing things that lie ahead of you on this path. Please bow your head with me and let us pray silently together according to your own individual beliefs. God, creator, source of endless compassion, bless these students as they begin their medical education journey while still maintaining their compassion, their empathy, and their servant hearts. Guide them to keep an open mind and heart while pursuing their dreams that might take them down unanticipated paths. Give them the courage to move beyond fear and doubt and find the strength in their capacity to care for others while respecting the diversity of all who seek their counsel. Help them to see and understand that true success is born out of meaningful relationships and is steeped in community, and that this life is meant to be shared. Bless them with the humility in the face of success and abundance. Bless them with generosity to share their gifts with others, for it is said, to whom much is given, much is expected. Bless them with compassion as they give of themselves to help those who, who are sick and suffering. Bless them with gratitude for their mentors, friends, and family who have and will continue to support them along this journey. Allow them to use their newfound knowledge to be healers, not just doctors, 
For medicine is so much more than a career, it is a vocation. We give thanks for this day and for the wisdom to recognize our gifts and serve you with gratitude. May God bless you, the students of the ICOM class of 2027, as each of you embarks on your healing journey. Thank you, Dr. Mormon, and thank you, Dr. Dry Belbis, for that beautiful and heartfelt uh, invocation. Well, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the leadership of this great college, the faculty and staff of all of us here of the Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine, I extend a warm welcome to each of you to this white coat ceremony for the class of 2027. Today we recognize and celebrate not only the past and the present, but mostly the future promise of these talented and absolutely delightful young student doctors seated before us today. You student doctors, you future physicians come to us from 28 states, representing 83 colleges and universities. Each of you is unique with your own beautiful and challenging and compelling life story. And yet for the next four years, you and the faculty and the staff will share a common journey, a common path, and a common bond. You and I know that we live in a very noisy, contentious, uncertain, and divisive world. There has never been a greater need for you to build a firm foundation, to educate your mind, your heart, and your hands, and to establish a set of governing values that will guide the very future direction of your life. We also live in a world filled with symbols. Symbols communicate and reinforce meaning and purpose. Symbols often invoke deep feelings and inspire attitudes and behavior. Today, we celebrate our student doctor's entry into the study and practice of medicine. Today, as Dr. Mormon said, you will don a white coat. White is the very symbol of cleanliness, of illumination, of understanding. And you'll take an oath. I hope that that oath will become for you an outward expression of an inward commitment to take upon you the powerful principles, promises, and practices of this great osteopathic medical professional. And I invite each of you to memorize that oath. And then I invite you to make an appointment to come visit with me or with Dean Wilson and recite that oath. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just pass the sniff test. And if you'll do that, if you'll do that, we will give you this beautiful osteopathic coin of the College of Osteopathic Medicine as we help you to celebrate and reinforce your inculcation of that beautiful oath into your new professional life. Our purpose at ICOM is to not only help you acquire huge volumes of medical and scientific information, but also to assimilate and assume the very mantle of physician, to begin to help you to look and think and act and behave like a consummate medical professional. 15 years ago, on a whim, I ran my first half marathon. I can remember very well when I got to about the 10 or the 11 mile mark, I thought I was gonna die. I just wanted to roll up and drop to the ground and curl in the fetal position. And I can remember another, another runner coming up to me and she said, you're doing great. You're almost there. Just keep going. And then like a rabbit, she took off and I've never seen her again. <laughs> but I've never forgot that heartfelt gesture 
for reaching back and giving words of encouragement. Now, my advice to you today, you young doctors who have arrived at the starting line of your own 26.2 mile marathon that will comprise your undergraduate and your graduate medical education, my advice is, for heaven's sakes, don't look back. Just keep going. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, if you want to go far in life and in medicine, then you lock arms with each other. You do this together. You lock arms and you go and you experience this together. And finally, this advice from my dear friend and mentor, Gordon B. Hinckley, things always have a way of working out to people that work really hard and have really good attitudes. May God bless you as you go forward on this great journey. Today, today we also acknowledge the presence of many parents, family, and friends of this wonderful class of 2027, many of whom have traveled long and far to be with us here today. Thank you for all that you have done to help prepare and things you will yet do to help sustain your loved one in his or her great journey, this rigorous thing that we call medical school. It's now my great pleasure to introduce my dear friend, Kevin Wilson, the Dean and Chief Academic Officer of the Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine. Dean Wilson. Good morning. I'd like to start by congratulating the class of 2027 for their admission to the Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine as you begin your journey in becoming an osteopathic physician. I'd like to give them a round of applause. Thank you to the friends and family who have gathered here to show your support for your student. Students, it's an exciting time to be an osteopathic physician. Over 25% of all medical students in the United States are currently osteopathic medical students. The match rate for osteopathic graduates in the 2023 match was the highest ever for our graduates. And for the first time ever in the 2023 match, more osteopathic graduates matched into family medicine residencies that cost the country than any other group of graduates. The osteopathic profession is a thriving, growing profession with unlimited opportunities for you as your career advances. Be aware of these opportunities in your career to be involved in the profession, whether as a health system leader in state or national organizations or as an educator of future physicians. The white coat ceremony focuses on humanism in medicine. This emphasizes your sensitivity and compassion to the values and autonomy and cultural background of all students and their families. You will be given a great gift, the ability to have close, caring relationships with patients and family who will trust your guidance and your judgment. Honor that gift by putting your patients above all others. As a student, as a resident, and as an attending physician, Please be the strongest advocate for your patient. You do this by spending time with them, by listening to them, and by trying to understand them. You are beginning on a path of lifelong learning. Your success depends on your ability to learn new skills, stay current in your specialty, and deepen your knowledge base. All of us here at ICON, the faculty, the staff, and the administration are focused on helping you grow and develop the skills to be a lifelong learner. So every time you put on a white coat, and please wash it every now and then, be aware of what it represents to your patients and your profession. It represents a caring attitude, a seeking understanding of your patients and their situation, and the professional behavior of honesty, integrity, altruism, and compassion as an osteopathic physician. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Next, we'll have uh, Dr. Daniel Bridger, who will share the history and significance of the White Coat Ceremony, 
who will be followed by the introduction of our keynote speaker. Thank you, Dr. Mormon. Good morning. The year is 1875. A well-known artist in Philadelphia paints what would go on to be one of the most famous uh, pieces of medical artwork in American history. It's entitled The Gross Clinic. It's a beautiful oil and canvas painting of Dr. Thomas Gross and his team performing a surgical procedure to the left thigh of a patient in a large surgical amphitheater while students watch and observe. Dr. Gross and his team are dressed in, in dark suits, dark ties, vests, as they perform this surgical procedure. Uh, later on, in 2006, the city of Philadelphia would raise $68 million uh, to compete with a bid from the National Gallery um, in Washington, D.C. to keep this piece of art in Philadelphia. Less than 20 years later, Thomas Eakins was at it again, painting another beautiful, beautiful piece of medical artwork in Philadelphia, another surgical amphitheater, this uh, painting titled The Agnew Clinic. A very, very similar painting, large sur surgical amphitheater, students watching Dr. Agnew and his team performing a surgery, this time to the chest wall of a patient. But there's one significant and very noticeable difference between these two paintings. Dr. Agnew and his team are wearing white lab coats as they perform this surgical procedure. Just less than 20 years later, same city, same artist. So what happened? What's the difference? Uh, what, what was going on in the field of medicine during this time? Well, the answer is a lot. There's a lot going on. Uh, Dr. Joseph Listner in Europe, a scientist and surgeon, was releasing some of his research about antisepsis, this theory that um, decontamination of the surgical field and prevention of bacterial infection can improve outcomes, reduce infection, and that a sterile surgical field, surgical prep, hand washing, decon decontamination can go such a long way in improving outcomes. And this is just one example of the kind of development of medicine as a biomedical scientific field. The faculty as researchers, doctors as scientists. And you start to see this in the dress of the physicians as scientists as they take care of patients in their white lab coats. And during this time, there was a profound and new sense of hope. Prior to these days, going to a physician was often a solemn a, a somber time, often near the end of life. Treatment options were limited. Outcomes were often poor. Um, but this started to change with the advent of the biomedical scientific model. And the white coat became the symbol of this change and became the standard dress of the physician throughout the 20th century. But it wasn't until about 100 years later in 1993 that the first white coat ceremony took place. It was the dream of Dr. Arnold P. Gold, a neurologist at Columbia. And his reasoning for the white coat was, if you're taking the oath of a physician and making that commitment to medicine at graduation, it's about four years too late. The, com the commitment occurs at the beginning of your education, it occurs now. And the white coat ceremony is a symbol of that commitment and a symbol of that dedication. So as you put on the white coat today, I uh, encourage you to think about the history of the white coat, a history of patient care, a history of scientific excellence, of professionalism, of compassion, and most importantly, of hope. Thank you. It's my great pleasure now to introduce our keynote speaker, my friend, uh, Dr. Jim Souza. 
Dr. Souza was born and raised in the great state of Montana. He graduated from the University of Montana and then pursued medical school and graduated from the great University of Washington School of Medicine. For the last many years, and you can read this in the bio in your program, Dr. Souza has been the senior physician leader and physician executive in Idaho's largest, most sophisticated healthcare system, the St. Luke's healthcare system. And he's done amazing work, an extremely difficult, challenging time there and in the history of hospitals here in America. Just last year, he was recognized by the Idaho Hospital Association as the Physician of the Year. Previously, he's received Teacher of the Year awards from other schools of medicine. In so many ways, I look upon Dr. Souza as a model physician. He is a role model for you young people. He is a model physician executive, and he's a master teacher. He's also learned how to balance the rigors of professional life, the practice of medicine, with family life. He's got a beautiful family. He's a healthy man. I've also learned that he loves music. I think, Jim, maybe we should recruit you to be part of the ICOM Spinal Cords Ensemble <laughs> if you do a good job today. Well, I'm so pleased to introduce to you Dr. Susie. If I were you, I'd listen carefully to everything he has to tell you. And then in the halls of the medical school in the coming days and weeks, I'm going to quiz you <laughs> and see if you remember a thing or two about the most important things he said. With that, we're pleased to introduce Dr. Jim Souza. Thank you for that really kind introduction. I, I would only believe a small amount of what he said. Welcome and congratulations to the ICOM class of 2027. Thank you to the faculty behind me and the friends and the families of the students in front of me. You've all played an important role in getting these young people to where they are today. Students, as a brief word of warning to you, when I sat where you are today, 35 years ago, before there was such a thing as a white coat ceremony, I was a whole inch taller, had a full head of hair, and it was all black. <laughs> so uh, the changes that are gonna come in the next four years uh, move to the physical also. As I said, the white coat ceremony wasn't around when I started medical school, but I've had the honor to be at lots of events where Moments are marked with words. And as I do this, I remember the wise words of Maya Angelou who said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you do, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So that's actually what I'm going for today. I'm going for a feeling. So how do you all feel? Thank you for your honesty. I suspect you have a lot of different emotions right now, and that's to be expected because you're all different people. You all got to this place on different paths. Some of you probably took a pretty traditional path. I did many years ago. Still, even if you did, you might be the first physician in your family, or maybe you're the first in your family to graduate from college. Some of you probably took a non-traditional path here. Some of you planned this all along. Some of you might have found yourselves here kind of accidentally. And all of you had to overcome some sort of adversity and challenge to be where you are today. Some of you are excited. Some of you might be nervous. Some of you might even be managing through the emotions of imposter syndrome. That's all okay. You're no imposter. So what's gonna to happen today? Quite literally, you're gonna put on those white coats. They're brilliant white, I see them all shining there. Uh, they look like you've got most of the wrinkles out of them. And today is probably the best that thing's gonna look. 
So yeah, you're going to put on a white coat. But it'll be the meaning of this act that is the cause for how you're feeling right now. The cause for the emotions you have. And I suspect that many of you probably feel the weight of this moment. And I think that's because you all understand, as has already been mentioned, that the white coat is a powerful symbol. So let's talk about it. It's a complex symbol for sure. As you already heard, it wasn't always white. It used to be black. And that was for many reasons. It was meant to convey a sense of formality and austerity and actually hide the grime of those physicians' work. It wasn't until late in the 1890s when the science of antisepsis, as chanced upon by Semmelweis and ultimately proven by many colleagues, that it switched to white. And it meant the growing knowledge, purity, cleanliness, and antisepsis of this profession. As you also heard, we didn't start doing this ceremony until 1993, and it was meant to disrupt a very old profession. It was established in order to re-emphasize the delivery of compassionate, collaborative, ethically and scientifically excellent care from the very start of medical school. So that's all well and good, but why does this moment feel so important? Why is there weight in the moment? And to answer this, you have to take a more societal or interpersonal view of the white coat. This coat you're about to put on signifies your training and knowledge. By wearing it, the people you encounter will look at you differently. They will see you differently. You will probably see yourselves differently. It also signifies a commitment to the light of science. And while the shorter coat of the medical student might not as clearly state this, the long coats of your attendings frankly look a lot like laboratory coats. And finally, it signifies the purity of your commitment to professionalism and humanism. A word on those two things. Starting with professionalism, that involves high quality work standards, integrity, and accountability. You're gonna work hard in the next four years and beyond. When you do it well, you're gonna have very high see-do match. That's the integrity. What you say is what you do and you're gonna hold yourself accountable to serving your patients in the best possible way you can. You'll make some mistakes and you'll learn from them and you won't repeat them. Let's move to humanism, which is where I'd like to spend most of my time. You are called. You're called to see the potential value and goodness in all human beings to emphasize the common needs that unite all of us, and to seek rational and scientific ways of solving human problems. Wearing this white coat is going to literally invite you to situations that are going to change you. Don't be afraid of that. Embrace it. After all, as Jim Rohn reminded us, you can't do things you've never done before unless you become someone you've never been before. You will see people and care for people at their very best. People like the Man of Steel, that's what we all ended up calling him, whose first name is Bobby, a 60-year-old I cared for with acute respiratory distress syndrome about 20 years ago a man who spent 60 days on mechanical ventilation, who we didn't think could or would survive, a man who spent another two months in rehabilitation. Gratitude brimmed out of this guy at all times. And to this day, he sends me a Christmas card thanking me and the whole team for the past 20 years and all that he has lived in that time. You'll care for people at their best. You'll care for people at their worst. People like Cecil, an alcoholic I cared for in my early days of training in Seattle, recalcitrant and obstinate and rude and impulsive. He suffered mightily through end-stage liver disease 
and ultimately the ravages of his alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy. While he could never help himself, how I and so many others helped him through his suffering and ultimately dying in the flashes of gratitude that occurred in those moments, that was my first profound lesson that suffering is one of the most prominent common threads of humanity. That rich, poor, white, black, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, atheist, red, blue, north, south, east, west, there is a great commonality in humanity when you see it up close. Because up close, we all suffer. So you'll care for people at their worst. You'll be humbled by the gratitude of the people you serve. People like Jose, who I cared for about 15 years ago when he acquired hantavirus pulmonary syndrome, a man who was an undocumented immigrant sent in to do the work most thankless and lowest paying at a dairy farm, literally mucking out the stalls, which is where he acquired his disease. He spent four weeks on mechanical ventilation, almost lost his life. He couldn't pay me a nickel, but he kissed my hand on the day of discharge. Ellen still gets me. You'll be frustrated by the self-destruction you can't stop in people like Joanne who had a rare type of early onset emphysema caused by the subcutaneous injection of Ritalin, called Ritalin Lung. A woman who had a small child and who I worked really hard to fight for with a regional university to get her listed for transplant at age 29, and a woman who relapsed with a drug overdose about a month before she would have received a new lease on life, who was removed from the transplant list for that lapse and then died of her emphysema a few months later. So you'll be frustrated by things you can't control. You'll experience some defeats. Defeats like young Scotty, a 25-year-old newly married man whose parents made the choice to keep his cystic fibrosis diagnosis from him for his entire childhood, telling him instead that it was asthma so that he could have a normal childhood. There was a noble purpose behind that deception. But by the time I saw him, he was already very advanced and qualified for lung transplant. And it took me two years to overcome a lifetime of denial and convince this young man that he would more likely be alive in five years with someone else's lungs in his chest than his own. And one week after I convinced him, got him listed, he was admitted to the hospital with overwhelming pneumonia and left his pregnant wife a widow. So you'll experience defeats you're going to also experience amazing victories for patients. In people like Marion, who was misdiagnosed with asthma for 15 years and suffered all the ravages of being steroid dependent, devastating, who turned out to have a slowly growing benign pedunculated tumor in her main trachea, a diagnosis picked up on a simple pulmonary function test flow volume loop something you're going to learn how to read, and a careful physical exam with a stethoscope you're going to learn how to use, which led to a surgeon curing her with a simple rigid bronchoscopy. You're going to experience immense pride and joy, like in the countless moments that you're going to enjoy in your career that are going to more than account for the tough stuff. When a patient or family member is going to take time to tell you thank you or write you a note of thanks or stop you in the store and proudly introduce you to their family, you're going to change to become the person who takes thousands of your fellow human beings through those moments. That's going to happen. Let it happen. Don't be afraid of it. You will make errors of commission and omission because you too are human. These are gonna be your hardest lessons and your best lessons. Always remember, however, that you are human, that to err is human, and that the best defense against these errors 
is humility and a commitment to the systems and processes around our care to keep us and our patients safe. And remember that some of those tools are as simple as a checklist. Never be too proud to use a checklist. And finally, throughout all of this, you're going to gain a greater appreciation of the power and the limitations those white coats create. It comes with some baggage. Some of it's absolutely wonderful. The science and the purity and the service to your fellow man. Some of it's not so good. The historical cool indifference, the resistance to change, and the times when science and medicine were used for ugly purposes that run counter to humanism. And among the patients you care for, their lived experience of all the others who wore the white coat are going to affect how they see you in your white coat. So do all that you can to humanize it. Make it a powerful symbol for good. And as you hone your professionalism and further develop your humanism, you're going to find, I think, one day that you no longer need the tool of the white coat. Sort of like a child that can put away a beloved toy. You, you too, I think, will find that there will be a time when you no longer need the lift, the security, the privilege, and sometimes the armor that it's going to provide you. But use it now. Use it to invite yourself into this amazing, life-changing landscape of growth that you're all going to enter and experience. Use it with your peers. Use it with your patients. Use it when you speak up against injustice. Wear it with an appropriate dose, however, of humility and the weight of the responsibility it brings. The responsibility, ultimately, to actually divest of your privilege so that you can come even closer and listen even better to the humans that you're going to save, serve, be with, laugh with, suffer with, and lift up. So thank you all for the opportunity to speak with you. Congratulations to the ICOM class of 2027 on this fantastic day. Dr. Souza, thank you for your words and your stories. They're very touching. You've inspired us, and it is my hope that each of us finds a way to apply your encouragement to our lives. Again, thank you. Now let's proceed with the presentation of the white coat to each of the ICOM student doctors. At this time, Dr. Catherine Potter and Dr. Susan Rogers will announce each student doctor as faculty members coat them. As Dr. Catherine Potter and Suzanne Rogers come to the podium, let the faculty coders step into position. Ushers, please guide the students forward to the presentation of the white coats. The first group of student doctors will be coded by their faculty, Dr. Rodney Bates, Dr. Laura Bennett, Dr. Nasser Butt, Dr. Brad Chadwell, and Dr. Stephanie Child. Mallory Allen. Emma Anderson. Mac Anderson. Sarah Arain. Dallin Ashton. Ben Fillier Babbitt, Eve Bay, Riley Banuelos, Jared Barber, 
Student Dr. Garrett Battaglia will be coded by his brother, Dr. Bridger Battaglia. Ryder Bellis, Brandon Benson, Elliot Behrens, Student Dr. Glenn Bigsby V will be coded by his father, Dr. Glenn Bigsby IV, Samuel Billig. Victoria Bozon, Sarah Bowden, Justine Briso, Julia Burrington, Robert Burns. Levi Butler, Joao Kadozu, Indervir Chahal, Timothy Chai, Hayden Chatterton. Justin Chilson, Jeremy Clayton, McKenna Cobley, student Dr. Tyler Crawford will be coded by his father, Dr. Russell Crawford. Mitchell Cushman. Danielle Davidson will be coded by her mother, Dr. Elaine Davidson. Nicholas Davis. Matthew DeVera. Denver Brent Dobson. Student Dr. James Drees will be coded by his father, Dr. David Drees. Whitney Durosher. John Edge. Tess Ferguson. Haley Fonseca. The following student doctors will be coded by Dr. Gary Dievska, Dr. Tanisha Denning, Dr. Don Dyer, Dr. Jessica Evans, and Dr. Jennifer Hotsman. Bren Elizabeth Fox, Haley Fritz, Michaela Garcia, Jeffrey Giallella, Peyton Glenn. <laughs> Olivia Goodenough, Connor Gold, Haley Grant, Jesse Grevy, Jackson Griffin. <clears throat> Madeline 
Girk. Kylie Hawes. Student Dr. Camelia Hassan Bay will be coded by her father, Dr. Lotfi Hassan Bay. James Hare. Gratiano Kevin Halim. Shannon Hall, Paul Hanna, Eric Hansel, Landon Hatch, Riley Holman. Han, Sharika Hossein, Paul Robert Hunt, Ben Hunthausen, Lauren Hutchinson. Amher Iqbal, Christopher Jacobs, Jessica Jagelski, David Jarvis, Jeremy Jarvis. Carson Jepson, Clay Johns, Aria Johnson, Mark Joelstead, Jonah Jones. Shivam Kunbur, Chandresh Kimji, Isaac Kim, Nicholas Klaus, Pranav Kohli. The following student doctors will be coded by Dr. Matthew Lay, Dr. Ellis Locke, Dr. Joshua Lundberg, Dr. Lana Lynch, and Dr. Mike Mitov. Anisha Konkapudi, Stephen Cody, Carson Krebs, Mara Krutzinger, Devin Kunstler. <laughs> Nathaniel Landreth. Student Dr. Michael Larson will be coded by his father, Dr. Paul Larson. Christy Lau. William Lawson, Genevieve Lee. <laughs> Leisha Lloyd, <laughs> Sophia Madsen, Usara Manon, 
Andrew Thomas Marks, Anthony John Mayer. Jordan McAllister, Emily McClay, Cooper Ryan McGrath. Student Dr. Jared McLaughlin will be coded by his brother, Dr. Eric McLaughlin. Student Dr. Aaron McMaster will be coded by his father, Dr. Jay McMaster. Dennis Mead, Luke Merritt, Ian Middleton, Subi Ha Mola, Joshua Morcom. Student Dr. Connor Morrison will be coded by her father-in-law, Dr. Glenn Bigsby IV. Taylor Moulton. Leah Moyle. Sarah Mushlin. Alexander Myers. Luke Myers, Brianna Nelson, Jonathan Netter, Ernie Ogden, Aspen Ousley, Andrew Parkin, Byron Pierce, Joseph Anthony Pisa. Student Dr. Eliza Peters will be coded by her mother, Dr. Jane Peters. Christopher Peterson. Student Dr. Michael Petroff will be coded by his father, Dr. Mark Petroff. Alex Peturd, Britton Porter, Mason Porter, Danny Pounds, The following student doctors will be coded by Dr. Inea Phoenix, Dr. Richard Sloan, and Dr. Jessica Zebarth. Prier Pretorius. Chris Pringle. Faye Rahman. <laughs> Urban Ramandaban. Student Dr. Thomas Ripperda Jr. will be coded by his father, Dr. Tom Ripperda. Lily Stewart Robb. <laughs> Ann 
Andy Rodriguez, Seth Routman. Student Dr. Abigail Rogers will be coded by her father, Dr. David Rogers. Megan Royal, Ugata Rubis, Anika Sahota, <clears throat> Jade Sacalaris. Jordan Sanuk, Quinn Schroeder, <clears throat> Max Sosarski, student Dr. Dason Smith will be coded by Dr. Rand Colbert. Kevin Stoll. <clears throat> Vincent Stoppolo. Calvin David Sturgeon. Nathan Suri. Robert Swoboda, Sarah Temple, <laughs> student Dr. Megana Tirupathi will be coated by her mother, Dr. Srilatha Tirupathi. <laughs> Dylan. Trauma, Dylan Travis, Dr. Hassan, excuse me, Hassan Usmani will be coded by his mother, Dr. Uzma Khan. Payson Webster, Nicholas Whiting, Tyler Wilson, <clears throat> Christine Wing. Lou Wolf, Jonathan Walatera, <clears throat> Araceli Wangwatana, Christine Yang. Malina Yeager. It is my pleasure to recognize you, student doctors, for completing the rite of passage symbolized by the white coat ceremony. From this day forward, you have committed yourself to the values and ethical principles 
that will guide you through your academic and professional life. Class of 2027, we're delighted to welcome you as the newest members of the ICOM family and the community of osteopathic medicine. Esteemed guests, I present to you the ICOM class of 2027. Now you got your standing ovation too. That's an inside joke, but okay. <laughs> Student doctors, joining you today, either in person or remotely, are your family, friends, spouses, and significant others. They have supported you to make this day possible and will continue to support you through this journey of becoming an osteopathic physician. So student doctors may I ask you to stand, turn towards the audience, and express your appreciation to these wonderful people. While we're thanking people, I would like to take this moment to thank the student service team for their efforts to make today possible. Special recognition to uh, Ms. Liz Watson, the Director of Student Affairs, and Ms. Sharon Eisenbarth, Student Affairs Coordinator. Thank you. I would also like to thank the faculty and the ICOM employees who gave their time and talents to make this day a success. So thank you to everyone. At this time, I invite Dr. Janissa Oberbeck, Assistant Professor of Osteopathic pra Principles and Practice, as she will lead the class of 2027 in reciting the osteopathic oath. Following the oath, Dr. Oz Nakayama will provide a welcome on behalf of the ICOM alumni. The osteopathic oath can be found on the inside back cover of your program. As Dr. Oberbeck approaches the podium, may I ask the class of 2027 and the osteopathic physicians in the audience and on the platform party, please to rise. I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession I am about to enter. I will be mindful always of my great responsibility to preserve the health and the life of my patients, to retain their confidence and respect, both as a physician and a friend who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity, to perform faithfully my professional duties, to employ only those recognized methods of treatment consistent with good judgment and with my skill and ability keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will be ever vigilant in aiding in the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or discredit upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation and never by word or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practices. I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art. To my college, I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the interests of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application 
of basic biologic truths to the healing arts and to develop the principles of osteopathy, which were first enunciated by Andrew Taylor Still. You may be seated. Hello, um, my name is Oz, like Dr. Mormon said, and um, I am a member of the inaugural class of 2022. Um, I want to thank Dr. Farnsworth and Dr. Uh, Wilson for letting me be here today to celebrate with you. This is a big day, um, and I am just grateful to be here with you. Um, I have successfully completed one year of internship, so I really don't have a lot academically to impart on you um, as you embark on this, but um, the one thing that I will leave you here with today that Dr. Mormon mentioned and that is echoed year after year at these ceremonies is to look next to you, to look at aisles over, to look behind you, um, and remember, remember the people near you and behind you, um, and thank those people. They have shaped and they have molded you into the people you are today, and they have supported you to get to this, to this exact spot, to put on that white coat. Um, these people, your, your parents, grandparents, siblings, children, spouses, what have you, will be the ones supporting you through this very difficult journey that doesn't just end in four years. Um, they will carry you more than you will ever know. I vividly remember five years ago, our white coat ceremony, I, as Dr. Davis will tell you, was slightly emotional um, because this is such a special day and the people that coach you um, care about you and they want to support you and especially those family members that coach you. It's such a special moment. And these people will be the ones that carry you and certainly will be the ones that support you. Um, and they are absolutely beaming with pride. This is, is just a monumental occasion. Um, and you need to know that they themselves have also made sacrifices to help you get here. Um, and every step that you go through and every step that you take in medical school and in residency and beyond, take a moment to remember to thank them. Remember the sacrifices that they made um, and that they supported you. As a, and as you are a supportee, you are now also a supporter of your classmates and your fellow medical students at other schools. Um, becoming a part of this world and embarking on this path, you have the ability to change lives. Um, you also have the opportunity to reach out to and connect those that came before you. My job as a, as a graduate, as it says in that oath, um, to be loyal to my college and strive for its best interest, y'all are my best interests. I care about you even though I've never met you, and I want to see your success. Um, I, I want to encourage you and remind you that you are capable you are significant, you are worth more than a piece of paper, and you are clearly competent to get this far and to go even farther. So I need you to never forget that. You are surrounded by decades of seasoned physicians and teachers sitting behind me in the audience, your, your family that have coded you, and I hope that, that through it all, you learn what it means to be human, because that's who you are. You are human, and you're gonna treat humans. So that is at your core. That's what's in this oath. That's what the people behind me will teach you over the next four years. Um, and it's something that you need to carry with you throughout all of this because it's, it's tough, but it's worth it. So thank you for letting me be here today. I congratulate you on this monumental occasion. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Dr. Nakayama. This marks the end of the white coat ceremony. We hope you'll join us for some light refreshments in the lobby following the recessional. For the recessional, may I ask everyone to please stand as you are able and remain at your seats until the student doctors have exited the hall. Thank you for attending the white coat ceremony for the ICOM class of 2027.
Thank you.